this is Miss Nelson. Today we are going to be learning about the most common misconceptions concerning the Big Bang Theory. Our learning goals are, I can construct an explanation for the beginning of the universe, and I can explain at least two common misconceptions about the Big Bang Theory. According to the Big Bang Theory, the universe began in a hot, dense state which is still expanding. Last class, we learned that it has four big pieces of evidence which support it. We are going to be learning about the five most common misconceptions which apply to the Big Bang Theory. There are more misconceptions out there. These are just the five most common ones I have experienced. So what is a misconception? A misconception can be defined as a view or opinion that is incorrect because it is based on faulty thinking or understanding. Our world is full of misconceptions. For example, George Washington didn't have wooden teeth. His dentures were made of gold, lead, hippotamus ivory, animal teeth, and possibly human teeth from slaves. Another common misconception is that the Great Wall of China is the only man-made object visible from space. The reality is the greenhouses of Almeria and the Kennecott copper mine are both visible from space. They're both incredibly large. According to two astronauts, the Great Wall is only visible from the lower part of low Earth orbit, and then only under very, very favorable conditions. It is not visible from the moon. There are thousands, if not millions, of misconceptions out there. Some are funny, some seem to make sense, and some are sad. Back to the Big Bang Theory and the common misconceptions. Close your eyes for a moment. Think about the Big Bang. What did it look like? Did you picture a giant explosion? It is often portrayed that way. It is often pictured that way. Honestly, I pictured it that way when I first learned the Big Bang Theory. The reality is there was no explosions. Explosions destroy matter, not create it. Matter was created from and after the Big Bang. A balloon blowing up. Expanding is a model of the Big Bang. A balloon exploding would be a model of the Big Bang if it had started with a giant explosion. Think about the slimy latex pieces of that theoretical universe that would be left behind. Ech. If the universe started with a giant explosion, energy would be pushed outward. And energy was, but the energy would be distributed in different patterns than we see now. We're talking a little about the cosmic background radiation, which scientists have used to calculate the average temperature of the universe. The second misconception goes along with the first one, with how we picture the Big Bang. The second misconception says that the Big Bang started as a small fireball in space. If I asked you to draw a picture of the Big Bang, this is probably what you would draw. Picture it. At first, there was nothing, infinite blackness, then, you see a small pinprick of light. That light quickly expands outward. Bright yellow, orange, and a little red stream outward in a fireball. It is easy to see this in your mind, but let's continue. What happened next? If it was a fireball on Earth, it would either die out or keep growing and consuming matter until it ran out of fuel or it was stopped. Now let's apply this scenario to the universe. What would happen? The universe sprang into existence. It isn't being consumed. The universe is expanding every day. It is not being burned or even eaten by a giant fireball. For the most part, fire consumes matter. It doesn't create matter. In chemistry, you will learn that fire is a combustion reaction. In the universe, all fire, all combustion requires some type of carbon compound and oxygen molecules. Methane has a molecular formula of CH4, one carbon atom bonded to four hydrogen atoms. Mix methane with oxygen and strike a match for an explosive reaction. For now, please take my word that carbon is created by stars from nuclear fusion of hydrogen, helium, or other atoms. For that matter, oxygen is also created that way. Carbon atoms didn't get created until well over 300 million years. The third misconception says that the singularity began in space. Let's think about the Big Bang Theory for a moment. The universe started as a hot, dense state which is still expanding. The theory goes on to tell us that the Big Bang created the universe. And what is the definition for universe? The universe is everything that has, 
does or will exist, including space and time. Think about that for a moment. Space is a part of the universe. The universe probably sprang into existence from a singularity. It's like which came first, the chicken or the egg? In this case, space came after. The singularity from which the universe sprang came first. I know it is frustrating. We don't know what the singularity was or why the Big Bang started. We lack information. I wish I could give you answers, but I can't. The fourth misconception. The theory doesn't explain what caused the Big Bang. A scientific theory is a statement meant to explain nature and as yet unobserved phenomena. The Big Bang would be an example of an as yet unobserved phenomena. We didn't see the universe spring into existence. We can't see that right now. Maybe someday we'll be able to see it. But right now, it's as yet unobserved. Notice the definition for a scientific theory does not say that. It needs to explain why something happened or what caused it to happen. It simply needs to explain what happened or happens. Albert Einstein gave us many things, including the theory of general relativity. This theory altered physics. He told us that space and time are not absolutes. He also told us that gravity is not a force applied to an object. Gravity is associated with the object and the space and time around it. This theory shows how light bends. His theory has led us to actually observe stars being born or going supernova behind other massive objects in space, such as solar nebulas or even galaxies. But Einstein's theory of general relativity didn't explain why, and it doesn't have to. Scientific theories do not have to explain why or what caused something to happen. No matter how much we wish that they did explain that, they don't have to. The origin of the singularity isn't as important as we want it to be. We can accept that from it the universe sprang, but we don't know what caused it, where it came from, what it looked like, how it formed. And for now, we just need to move on. We require more scientific evidence before we can truly explain its origin. Isn't it better to leave a question mark than to have to go back and correct misinformation? A scientific theory explains nature or phenomena. The Big Bang Theory explains how the universe and eventually all energy, matter, space and time sprang into existence. It does not and it doesn't need to explain what caused the universe to spring into existence. The fifth and final misconception says that there is no evidence to support the Big Bang Theory. All scientific theories are supported by evidence. The Big Bang Theory is a scientific theory. Ipso facto, the Big Bang Theory is supported by evidence. The Big Bang Theory is supported by four big pieces of evidence. I will list each piece of evidence. For more information on this evidence, please review my video on the Big Bang Evidence or see your book. One, we are reasonably sure that the universe had a beginning. Two, redshift and blue shift and the expansion of the universe. Three, the universe has an average temperature of 2.75 Kelvin. Four, the abundance of light elements, particularly hydrogen, helium, and lithium. Each piece of evidence has been repeatedly observed and proven true by scientists and even people who are simply interested in science. To dismiss the Big Bang Theory because it has no evidence is a serious misconception. The reality is it has lots of evidence which supports it. At this time, there is no evidence which contradicts the Big Bang Theory. If evidence is ever found which does contradict the Big Bang Theory, we either need to change the Big Bang Theory or discard it because it's not true. I have presented these misconceptions in the order I most often encounter them. They can be listed in any order, and there are many more misconceptions which could be added to this list. This lecture is meant to show you what some people believe. and why they're wrong to believe that. It's also meant to correct any misconceptions you might have. Let's be honest, it's really easy to be wrong. You may have been taught it, you may have assumed it, or you may have just dreamed it. It's okay to be wrong. You simply need to be willing to look further and correct any misconceptions you may have. The Big Bang Theory is accepted and believed by most scientists. It is also accepted and believed by many important famous people. Pope John Paul II, Pope Francis, Bill Nye the Science Guy, and of course Sheldon Cooper all believe in the Big Bang Theory. Let's review. The Big Bang Theory says that the universe began in a hot, dense state which is still expanding. 
Misconceptions are commonly held beliefs based on faulty reasoning or understanding. Everyone has some misconceptions. It's important that we realize and accept this and work to correct our misconceptions as we discover them. The Big Bang Theory has many common misconceptions. We have learned about the five I see most often. One, it was a giant explosion. Two, it started as a small fireball in space. Three, the singularity began in space. Four, the theory doesn't explain what caused the Big Bang. Five, there is no evidence to support the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory is accepted and believed by most scientists and many people. This is Miss Nelson. I want to thank you for listening and I hope you have a great day.